Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Ben Winter, Associate Professor at Ohio State, who d- primarily uh, works in undergraduate teaching in both nutrition and management courses in animal science. He's an expert in, in microbiology and especially continuous culture, which we're going to discuss in another podcast. But today we're going to talk about a, a research project he conducted a little while ago on the effect of zinc sources on, on basically fecal bacterial populations. Ben, welcome to the, to the podcast. Thanks, Bill. Well, first of all, I want to just start is, you know, why, why did you do this experiment? What was your interest in, in looking at zinc and, and fecal bacteria? Well, I think that that dates back to, you know, graduate school with uh, Matt Faulkner when he was your student. And the original paper, I think we kind of lucked into, right, where the um, Matt had some extra fecal samples. He said, hey, what can I do with these? We ran them. And then suddenly there was this what's going on moment where the the shift to uh, the glycinates from the sulfates across minerals uh, oh. led to that decrease in treponema. And we always sat there and wondered, well, which mineral was it? And um, I was at Tri-State a few years ago, and Sarah Kivadera, who's one of the co-authors on this paper, she asked me, she said, what if we had some zinc-only samples? Well, I'd, I'd love to know the answer, right? So those things sit in the back of your mind, and here's the chance. We have some samples left over from a study where they only changed the zinc sulfate to uh, the zinc hydroxy chloride, and I guess I'm just genuinely curious. I wanted to know. Okay, well, what, why why the interest in treponoma? Well, uh, so it's um, it's difficult at this point to kind of isolate which uh, of the treponemes were really shifting with the treatment, but among those treponemes are a few pathogenic species. So if you look in dentistry papers, they're related to like cavities and whatnot and degradation of your teeth. If you look at um, some other uh, papers related to human health, and the same thing is true across the cattle, that there was some papers that indicated at the time um, that the treponemes, some of the treponemes could be related to bovine digital dermatitis, which is a pretty big affliction in the dairy industry. And, it, and you know, it's not definitive, but the data is pretty suggestive that it's involved, at, at least involved in that, that disorder. Yes. So on um, on this experiment, what what did you vary? You said you had zinc sulfate or zinc uh, hydroxy zinc. Um, were these at reasonable supplementation rates, or did you do these super high things? Or well, uh, seventy five parts per million? I guess very, you tell me. Okay, very typical industry concentrations, and not not super high. Yeah, and I think the original point of the project was related to. Um, zinc uh, availability of different sources and feed restriction so ad libitum and then there was a feed restriction part of the study um, of course this is leftover stuff that we addressed a, a year or two later so then in that case the feed restriction piece um, we actually had a lot of trouble extracting the microbiome from that we had to toss it and there was a lot of contamination i'll credit kelly mitchell a co-author on the paper for working through that that was a real a real pain and so we only have the original piece where we're feeding either the 75 ppm of the sulfate, zinc sulfate, or the zinc hydroxy chloride. But those feeding levels were based on expectations for absorption and availability in the animal for other research you know, intentions. And like I said, they're very typical of in- industry concentrations, very typical. Well, what, what did you find, I guess? What, what kind of results did you find? Yeah, so if you look at the the paper, there's not a lot of exciting stuff happening, and you have to be, I always caution everyone to be careful when they interpret the results, because uh, when we do this sequencing, we're looking at relative abundance, right? So the total could have gone up, the total could have gone down, but we're looking at the relative abundance. But the relative abundance of those treponemes as a whole tripled. And within that group, um, treponema 2 is how it's labeled currently in microbial, uh, microbial databases. And the treponema 2 uh, is the one that's known to contain some of those pathogens. And so, again, the, de- the data is not, not conclusive, but the evidence is there that there's potentially a link between um, a zinc, uh, zinc treatment. Um, so the, the sulfate would have been um, three times the relative abundance of the hydroxychloride for those treponemes. So something... Those relative abundances were really high, something like 15 to 5. 
even higher than they were in Faulkner's paper. So a substantial, substantial change, not just a statistical change, but a really substantial change. Yeah, threefold. Yeah. So, you know, we know zinc has been related, to, uh, dietary zinc source has been related to foot health in general. So is this, uh, what would be the mode of action here, do you think, if if this is is really happening? And if that, that, if that bacteria is really related to digital dermatitis? Yeah, so there's two, two things going on here, right? So within the animal, the expectation is maybe that those more bioavailable zinc sources leave less zinc available for the microbes that are living in the lower digestive tract. And so maybe that zinc is um, less available because it's bound up. Like we know that sulfates tend to get a little bit bound up. Um, but however it happens, we know that there's more zinc there for those microbes to probably use. And, and they um, harness energy, their energy pathways around the zinc or an iron. And so they have an advantage then, the, something like the treponemes will have an advantage when there's additional zinc in that lower digestive tract. So that's not ideal. And, and I don't know if it's a hydroxychloride effect, as we've seen in the glycinates too, or if maybe it's the reverse, it's a sulfate mm -hmm. effect. Exactly. Um, right. But then what happens is if the sulfate enables three times as many threefold uh, number of treponemes being excreted in the feces, then that means we've had a threefold increase in treponine exposure to the foot of the dairy cow and the slurry that she's, I mean, reality is she's walking through. And so if you kind of draw the lines and there's dotted lines to follow there, but that would lead us to think that the, um, the risk is that we're increasing potential pathogens in the slurry that the cow walks through every day. I think, you know, we've always thought the zinc effect was largely through better immune function of the cow, but this is, doesn't mean it's, that doesn't happen, but this is just an alternative, potential alternative mode of action of the effect of zinc on, on hoof health. Is it just yeah, or at least, pathogen? or at least two ways, right? Exactly, exactly. It doesn't preclude one from the other. It's just another possibility. Yes, to, to finish up, what, what else could you do with this technology? I'm not a mi molecular guy or I'm not a microbial guy, but with this technology, what else can we do with it on, on looking at trace mineral effects on, on bacterial populations? Well, I think if you look at the literature and where I would go, um, I think we have to ask ourselves where this um, additional zinc is, is coming from, right? Is it a lack of digestibility and disappearance from the rumen or is it you know, downstream, uh, better harvesting by the treponemes than other bacteria. And we know that there's a mineral source effect on fiber digestibility. So I guess I would prefer to see more investment actually in the rumen side of things and the rumen knowledge that we gain in the way that those mineral sources interact with microbes for cellulitic activity will um, kind of lend itself to a better understanding of what's happening in the lower tract later. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Just to wrap up, there's still a lot we don't know about minerals, and I, I spent a career studying them, and we still there's a lot to learn yet. Well, th thanks a lot, Ben. This has been interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.